Hello everyone. Um, this is a quick update on my journey, a crazy journey, to try to use the Raspberry Pi as a 8-bit video card or video chip for my homebrew 6809 computer. Uh, let me just go over what I've added lately. Here, this is a Motorola 6821, a PIA, Programmable Interface Adapter. Uh, it just gives me a whole bunch of pins that I can set as either input or output. Um, what they output, this is a 5-volt board, so they output 5 volts. The Pi, no likey 5 volts. So I've got these little guys. These are logic level uh, shifters, logic level converters, I guess. Um, I think that it is, this is the TS, TS, TXS018, 0108E. Let's see. Yeah, there you go. Bidirectional level shifting voltage translator for blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that's what those guys are, and they're like... They don't really match the rest of the board, but whatever. Neither does the Pi, right? So um, anyway, these will take the 5-volt output from this guy, convert it to 3.3 volts, and send it off onto the Raspberry Pi. Um, as you can see right now, I only have two lines hooked up. That's these two guys. Um, one is the clock. It's an asynchronous clock. That's this guy. And one is a data line. I have one single data pin hooked up. But I programmed the software to make it easy for me to see errors. And boy, are we going to see errors. So if I just run the Pi software. Okay, so now you might be able to see there's kind of like a checkerboard pattern. Um, and, and, and basically the, the, the 6809 here is going to just, uh, send an alternating pattern of pixel one off, pixel two on, on one row, and then pixel one on, pixel two off on the second row. And so because it's a nice, perfect checkerboard pattern, it should be very easy to see any transmission errors that might be happening. And then I have the Pi set up so that, uh, the software on the Pi set up so that after we write a whole screen, then we change colors and we loop back to the start again. The 6809 doesn't know anything about that because it's only sending one bit of data. So, uh, let's, let's just see what we've got. So the, the Pi software is running. It's ready to receive data from the 6809. So let's just turn this on here. Blink. Okay. And here we go. So the 6809 is writing data so far. So good. Everything seems okay. Oh, what's that? What's that right there? What, what is that? That looks like we dropped a byte or, or a pixel. And now it's coming around and now it's off by one. Oh, look, we just dropped another one. Oh, we just dropped a whole ton of them. So the fact that the, you can see that the, the pattern gets interrupted to the left, that means we dropped bytes. When it moves to the left, because there, sh there should be 160 bytes getting sent per line. And so if it moves to the left, that means we've gotten fewer bytes on that line. And, and then the other thing I want to point out is just look at the interference. Look at the, this is not a problem with your television. Uh, we control the vertical, we control the horizontal. Uh, your, your TV or, or your monitor is working fine. However, mine is not. Okay, so it looks like we've gotten through almost an entire page. That would be 32K. Uh, without dropping a bite, but rest assured, ladies and gentlemen, that we're going to be dropping more bites soon. And then just look at that interference. So what I'm going to do, yeah, there's some more bites dropped. What I'm going to do when the in interference is especially bad, which it's going to be, trust me, it's going to be, um, is I'm going to turn off the 6809 
computer and and see what happens to the image and then we'll have pretty solid hard evidence as to who the culprit is yeah i i want to keep zoomed in because otherwise it gets weird but yeah you can definitely see that there is a ton of interference there we're not dropping bytes you know like every every five bytes or anything like that we're dropping them like every i don't know 1000 bytes but that's that's still deadly oh look at that interference look at that okay i'm gonna turn the 6809 off are you ready off boom perfectly rock stable interference basically gone you may not be you may still see some weird more patterns or flickering and that is just the camera but those crazy interference patterns are gone and you can see since the start of the test we've dropped i don't know how many bytes quite a few and i can turn turn the 6809 back on and oh look at that isn't that isn't that pleasant isn't that what you want to see now you know some of that might be from the fact that I'm using the composite video output on the Pi, but but why wouldn't I? Uh, composite is is what what we were used to uh, back in the old days. So look at that! Look at all that interference that it's generating, and off. Oh well, that's interesting. Oh, that's the first time I've seen that. The interference is continuing even with the sixty eight hundred nine off. Let me turn it back on again. And it's pushing bytes, dropping bytes. That is really interesting though. I don't think I've, yeah, no, look, it's still, it's still causing interference. That is interesting. Anyway, um, as you can see, I am pushing data to the Pi and it is displaying it on the screen. And so I guess that is somewhat of a victory, but just completely missing signals is, it's not good. And uh, I'm, I'm pushing the data at an extremely slow rate. At, at a rate that's so slow that it, basically it would be unusable in its current state. Uh, so that's kind of a bummer. Um, I'm not sure if this whole thing is actually going to work out. It's looking like it's not going to. But I'm going to probably keep trying, trying some other things. Anyway... I think that's about it. Um, uh, yeah, uh, possible. I mean, I think that the the idea behind behind using a Pi as a, a a graphics chip was was not necessarily flawed, but the the details of this current implementation obviously are having issues. So I'll be looking into that, and until next time. Have a good one.